Hello and welcome to New Zine. I am Deepak Darade, Japanese scientist and recipient of Deming Prize Award for an individual category. Dr. Noraiki Kano and Janak Mehta were in the Pune for a conference. We had an interview with them and they talked about their journey and requirement of total quality management for a Make in India movement. Let's have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Maruki Kano and Mr. Janak Mehta. Both are recipients of David Prize for individual. And we are going to talk about total management, total quality management. My question is to Dr. Kano. Uh, can you please elaborate what is total quality management? Uh, this is a, a management system uh, for, uh, so, uh, based on that uh, uh, customer focus. The most important thing, how to realize customer focus. Uh, for this purpose, that's a very important thing is the top management commitment. And uh, all the people, uh, not only that uh, senior management, uh, senior managers, uh, executive management, executive, but also managers and also engineers and also workforce and sales rep, all the people involvement. And uh, uh, the methodology is the scientific approach. And also, I think you are familiar about the PDCA, Plan to Check and Act. We try to implement this, uh, all the management aspects. Maybe you may consider about that uh, process approach. We intend to make a good result, but for this purpose, we focus to that uh, process. Uh, this could be called uh, the TQM. Okay. Uh, if I not make a mistake, uh, Demi Prize started in from uh, 1951. Yes. And uh, from that period mm -hmm. till the moment, mm -hmm. how total quality management is working and works for mm -hmm. Japan's mm -hmm. development. Okay. At the beginning, when we started the deming, that what we call statistical quality control. And then, come to be around the middle of 1960s, we start the TQC, total quality control. And then we develop the uh, more content. Mm -hmm. And then, come to be the middle of 1990s, we change to that uh, total quality management. Mm -hmm. The substantial uh, say, uh, principle is that uh, same. But uh, more, we try to make enrich the methodology mm -hmm. and the concept. Like that is called the today at TQM. Uh, you are the recipient of the Deming Prize for individual. Mm. How how is your experience in total quality management? Yes, uh, in my case, that uh, I started, I started to involve that this activity when I was. Uh, undergraduate student because my professor is that Professor Kaurishikawa, he was the, the pioneer in this area. Mm -hmm. So since then, that I say, uh, nearly 60 years I have worked for this area. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm basically academician. Mm -hmm. But at the same time that I work a lot in that uh, industrial areas. Uh, so that to say, for example, I was a corporate auditor of Seki Sui Chemical. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the uh, one of the big five, biggest five chemical company in Japan. The revenue is uh, now that uh, one billion uh, dollar, uh, sorry, ten billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I work for the uh, corporate auditor ten, uh, six years, and also uh, another. I was also invited to Komatsu, uh, construction machine company. Mm -hmm. uh, this is I uh, was a board member, uh, external board members outside board members and they also six years. Okay. So from this uh, say I was not only academician but mm -hmm. also industrialist. And then also that I, I have a lot of work in that uh, domestically in Japan but I have many experience in overseas. So I have worked in that U US or Europe and uh, Asia including India. Mm -hmm. Maybe that I have not so much done in the Africa. Africa and also Antarctic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the other areas, all the continent, I have done that. Okay. Uh, 
Dr. Kano, uh, India has adopted liberalization in 1991. Mm. And now this government of India has started making India. Mm. How do you think that total quality management mm. would help mm -hmm. to Indian industries and businesses mm -hmm. to mm. develop uh, mm. as per your? Yeah. Okay. So that uh, before going talking about that India, let me talk a little bit about that. What is the contribution of TKM in Japanese uh, uh, industry? Okay. So we started that TQC, it called Total Quality Control. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that is uh, around 90, in the middle of the 1960s. At that time, that say uh, exchange rate of the U.S. dollar to Japanese yen. Mm -hmm. One dollar you put it in the one dollar, uh, you can get three hundred sixty yen. But do you know that say after that fifty years passed, mm -hmm. but today that uh, you put in one dollar, how much you can get? Just hundred ten yen. So that uh, but uh, it comes to be a little bit to say we could most strenuous time of yen. At that time, if you bring one dollar eighty yen, three hundred sixty. 80 yen. Uh, nowadays, that how much the one dollar is the rupee? How many? If we bring the one dollar, how much rupee we can get? How much? Rupee. Uh, I, I don't have any. No, no. Why you start? Seven. Seven zero. But say, please consider about that. It comes to be one quarter. It means that say one US dollar comes to be say something around 20 rupees. Can you imagine about that? Mm. Okay. But it happened. Do you know the reason is that our product was very poor in quality mm -hmm. in that 1950-60 and also that our biggest problem is the food problem. Mm -hmm. Our population is so big, but we don't have enough food. We must buy the food from overseas. That is that the driving force uh, for the, our industry. In this case, at that time, our Japanese yen cannot accept any country. It's the same with Indian rupee. Okay. We must get the U.S. dollar by export. In the case that we must enhance the quality. Our quality started for that, say, export, in order to get the U.S. dollar. And then for, by which we can uh, get that food. At that time, our problem is that, say, most of people, my generation, as I say, they, they, are, they don't have no problem about the weight. Today, our problem is the big weight, like uh, we have a lot of problem about that, the diabetics and so on. That come from that, say, uh, now in, at that time, 50 years ago, we had a very serious problem of food. Now we have uh, too much food, <laughs> okay? Uh, by this means, we can buy from any country like this. So in this way, Japanese prosperity come from that, say, uh, by the enhancement of the external trade. So I think you may have also similar problem. So in the case now you have to make, uh, you say your government start, uh, make India movement. That's great. So that to say, so far, you see, I know that say you, you many companies now involved about that TKM. Mm -hmm. But so far in Japanese market, I think if we go to the department store, it's very difficult to find any product which are made in India. Maybe we can find that the tea, uh, Darjeeling tea, mm -hmm. and anything else. I doubt mm -hmm. very much. That's right. But uh, say, uh, so the actual say, I think making uh, make India movement, how we can success that say, how we can see that say, a, a product of made in India in New York or London or Tokyo or Paris like this. Right. Um, we have uh, another recipient for daily pricing uh, in for individual, uh, Mr. Janak Mehta. Uh, very warm welcome to New Zealand. Uh, Mr. Mehta, since how long you are connecting with this total quality management and uh, how is your experience? How you started these kind of uh, concert and workshops in India? Uh, I was in working in industry and in 1980s, early 80s, I realized India was in a debt trap. 
we had such high duties, import duties, couldn't export anything, cost of everything was so high. So the industry I was working for, we were not competitive. Scrap was high, we could sell what we produce. So I sense sooner or later, Indian economy has to open. So in 1982, during my visit to Japan, business trip, I went and uh, to the office of Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers because I had heard how Japan has transformed its, its economy through quality movement. So I picked up whatever literature was available in English, brought it to in India. I was in Nasik. So we got 11 companies involved in a cooperative movement to improve quality. These companies included Indian companies and foreign companies. So we started this experiment in 1983. And since then, I have been involved in this. After 1988, when I was the chief executive of Biko Engineering, I left that and devoted full time to improve quality in India across the country. So that time we took a lot of help from Jews. We invited Professor Ishikawa, who was in a way the father of the quality movement in Japan. He came in 1986. I did this on behalf of uh, CII. And that was the first conference which we held for top management with Dr. Krishnamurti chairing it. And since then, uh, we have good cooperation with Jews and uh, many delegations to Japan and many programs in India. And Dr. Kano is one of the gurus who has been coming to India to help us to find new and better ways of improving quality. Because what worked 20 years ago will not work today. We have to find better ways. Right. Well, what is the actual situation in India as, as per, as concerned quality in, in industry? What do you think? I think over the last 30 years, it has improved considerably. We were at a time when we didn't care about the customer. Our defect levels were in 5%, 10% level. Mm -hmm. That's even after passing the defects to the customer. Now we have come to a stage we are at uh, maybe less than 1%, maybe 100 ppm, 200 ppm level. There's a considerable improvement in some industries. In those segments of the economy, especially automotive, where the competition is so stiff, the improvement has been substantive. But those industries where the competition is not so strong, improvement is still limited. But we have no choice. So what I sense is that in, after the economic liberalization in early 90s, Indian industry took quality seriously. But as the reform movement slows down in the 2000s, then the industry also didn't find the need to do it, especially those industries which are not in a competitive environment. But the need still persists and we need to do a lot more in this area. As other countries are not standing still, they are still working very hard on quality. So you've got to catch up. Do you think this Japanese technique, total quality management, it is, uh, is it useful to Indian industry and uh, how it really works? I think many Indian industries over the last, uh, since 1985-86, have adopted these practices. And uh, Deming Prize, which is the highest recognition for quality in the world, 39 companies from India have challenged and won Deming Prize. Oh. It shows how seriously some of the companies in India have taken it and benefited from that. This is the largest number from outside Japan. But is it enough? I doubt very much. But I think if you notice, economic prosperity of all countries, whether it's Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, South, Southeast Asia, or the Western world, the foundation is quality. And if India wants to be in the big league, we have no choice but to focus on quality and reinforce our effort to improve quality in the context of meeting customer requirements, not what quality we think as a quality. That's why TQM is very important, the Japanese style, 
because it is focused on the customer. You are working since long time in the Indian business, Indian industry. Uh, what, what do you think this total quality management is to work for Make in India and how it will help because you are conducting the workshops and conferences in India for this segment? What do you think? Making India cannot succeed without quality. Ultimately, whatever we make is to be used by a customer. If he is not happy or she is not happy, what good is that product? So, make in India means I should be able to make products which the customer likes and enjoys using. Then only, not only in India, Ultimately, Make in India will succeed when I'm able to sell these products outside India. So the customer is not only restricted to India. How do we export to the customers who are willing to buy in other countries and enjoy buying it at a price at which they are willing to pay for it? So without uh, TQM, Make in India How will not succeed. How is the feedback for your workshops? Because you are taking these kind of workshops from the last seven, six years. How is it feedback? Feedback is good, but our challenge is most of the companies who come to these seminars are large companies or medium sized companies who can afford it. We can't reach out to every company, but the backbone of the country's industry is in the medium and small enterprise, small and medium enterprise. That is the backbone. So our endeavor is that the large companies we work with, they in turn work with their suppliers and their suppliers third tier three suppliers which are in the medium and small industries and they ultimately have to improve. Is there any plan to approach government of India for making it uh, on the large, large scale? See, uh, as my personal opinion, this is in a democratic society. It is not the role of the government. The role of the government is to create an environment which is conducive to competition and growth. Then it is up to the industry who have to feel the competition. So the government's role is to create competition, create an environment which encourages competition, not only from within India, but from outside India. One way is we raise, raise duties, import duties, and industry can make money, like it's happened in the recent past. That's one way. Other ways, how do we become more competitive and more cost effective in the process? So that we are able to sell. That is the way to uh, economic growth in the country. Make in India can't happen without this. Thank you, Dr. Kano. Yes, with my pleasure. Mr. Janak Mehta for joining us and talking about total quality management. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay.